Grady Jarrett may be done for the year, but the Falcons hope trading for Contavious Street is going to help stop that bleeding. But yet we still don't know who is going to be the quarterback. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with a winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. So, guys, if you don't know me, I'm your very, very, very humble, prophetic host, Aaron Freeman, cover the Falcons for many years. You know, my prophecies date back, you know, over a decade. Used to drop them over at falcfans.com, RIP. Used to drop them on Twitter at falcfans, RIP, but still going strong. It's your very humble host on this illustrious podcast. And so, guys, I want to. Thank all of you everydayers. You you everydayers are rewarded today because you've been tuning in for the last two weeks, hearing me drop the little nugget of Contavious Street all up in your earballs, right? And now you get rewarded for that loyalty. And you guys too can become an everyday. If you want to get these prophecies going strong, I, I don't know why I'm in a good mood. Grady Jarrett's hurt, so. But I'm just sitting here saying we got we got to take our wins when we can get them when we're Falcon fans. But become an everyday guys by subscribing following for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. So as I said, we'll be joined a little bit later in today's episode by Corey Woodruff of the Falcoholic of For the Win for USA Today uh, to talk more about this Titans loss. He was in attendance at the game, share his thoughts on the ongoing quarterback saga. We don't know who the Falcons starting quarterback is going to be in week nine. We'll talk about it with Corey. We'll also talk about the impact of Grady Jarrett's injury a little bit later with Corey. We were going to talk about potential trades, but recorded that episode. And then after within minutes of me and Corey, you know, not talking, uh, this Contavious Street news broke. So again, every dayers for the last two weeks, we first, I think the first time we talked about the Falcons trading for Contavious Street, the current or former, I guess, Philadelphia Eagle was on the rapid reaction after the Washington loss two weeks ago, mentioned on that episode that the Falcons might swap Jalen Hawkins, their former safety, for Contavious Street with the Eagles. They wound up cutting Hawkins two days later, and of course, two weeks later, wind up making this trade for Contavious Street. It's a similar trade to the Van Jefferson trade in terms of turns, but you know, when you're trading with the Eagles and Howie Roseman, Eagles general manager, you know, you got to give up a little bit more, right? And so this trade, the Falcons are going to get Contavious Street from the Eagles, as well as a 2025 seventh round pick but they'll have to give up a 2024 six round pick that is conditional based off of Ian Rappaport's report that if street plays six or more games for the rest of the season, that will be uh, a six round pick. Uh, presumably maybe it's a seventh. I don't know the exact conditions. We'll find out more information as they come, but this is a move that initially is going to bolster that D tackle rotation, give them a versatile player that can also play some D in if need be right. We're talking about edge rusher. Uh, as, as a position that they could upgrade, but he can give you some size there and that will allow you to kick Calais Campbell inside, which you might need to do because, you know, Grady Jarrett's down for the year. Again, we'll talk about that more uh, a little bit later, but, you know, I thought this was a move, again, talking about it two weeks ago, I thought this was a move that would happen regardless of Grady Jarrett's injury because you needed to bolster that D-tackle depth. We've seen this team churn that unit. That's what brought this on. Talking about two weeks ago, it's like every week there's a new D tackle combination. Now, the last two weeks, it seems like they're kind of settling on LaCale London being their primary guy. He's been the guy that stepped in when Grady Jarrett initially injured some leg injury. Maybe it's related to the knee. I don't know, but he missed a big chunk of that Bucks game. Then he misses all but four snaps. He injures on the first series, tears his ACL, kind of a non contact injury, just kind of steps on it wrong. And I guess it pops on that opening series. And LaCale London was the primary guy playing next to uh, David Onyemata. But 
we thought you already needed an upgrade at that D tackle just so you can keep Anyamada and Grady Jarrett fresh because they've been playing a ton of snaps this year. And you wanted to keep those guys fresh, hopefully for a playoff push. That's what we were talking about two weeks ago. And you already needed to make that move. And of course, now with Grady Jarrett down, you, you need, you know, the urgency, the sense of urgency got even higher. So this move kind of had to happen for the Falcons and getting someone who's familiar with Ryan Nielsen makes a ton of sense. If you don't know Contavious Street, I'm sure many of you don't because, you know, you know, I was, I was going to say casuals, but that, that's, that's, that's not the right term, right? You, you, you have to be a, a true football junkie or an everyday of this podcast to know the name Contavious Street, right? He was originally a fourth round pick out of NC State for the 49ers in 2018. He was part of that NC State D line that featured four players that got drafted. It's Bradley Chubb, BJ Hill, Justin Jones, and Kadavis Street. They, you know, they were coached by some guy. Who was their D line coach? I think it was Ryan Nielsen. He's uh the defensive coordinator of the Atlanta Falcons or something. I don't know. But he was basically a D end, an uh, oversized D end, sort of perfect for that 4-3 under strong side defensive end. So basically, this, the role that we play Calais Campbell in right now. That back in the day when Dan Quinn was here, that was like the Tyson Jackson, Derek Shelby role. That's basically what he was drafted to do in San Francisco. Didn't really do a whole lot in his four years. Suffered an ACL tear his rookie season, so missed that year. And then the next three years was kind of buried on that rotation. We know the 49ers had a prolific pass rush, so he didn't really get a lot of action. You know, signed with the Saints in 2022. Again, part of that rotation. And you look at the numbers, you see three and a half sacks, you see some underwhelming PFF grades. Again, sorry for the casuals, but this is what separates the, the, the true grinders in terms of film versus the casuals. Because if you went back at any point and watched 2022 Saints defense, I know it sounds some of you guys are, you know, throwing up in your mouth and, and whatnot, thinking about that. But if you went back just to, See what Ryan Nielsen might be bringing to the table as a D coordinator, what David Onyemata, what Kay Nellis might be bringing to the table. If you watched enough of that Saints film, you, you'd see Contavia Street popping constantly on film. You're like, this guy's got something. And again, that's why I say, you know, the casuals might say, oh, well, you know, look at his 40 or 50 PFF grades. He, he ain't nobody. That's why you got to watch the film, guys. But, you know, it was actually surprising that the Falcons didn't sign Contavia Street this offseason. When, you know, in a Joe Gaziano like move to add some depth on that defensive line, just because of that familiarity that he has with Ryan Nielsen, he wound up again, whether the Falcons offered, who knows? Don't know. But he wound up signing with the Eagles and, you know, they went on and drafted Jalen Carter. He was kind of buried on, on, the, on their depth chart right behind Jalen Carter and Milton Williams and Fletcher Cox and Lord knows who else. So he wasn't playing a whole lot, but when he did get opportunities the last couple of games, you know, there's only like three games where he got more than seven snaps in, in these games. He did, you know, pressure here, stop here. You know, he did pop a couple of times. So he was just kind of buried on that. And th that was part of the reason why we're able to identify, like we need some D tackle help. This guy has familiarity. You know, the Eagles don't really need him, right. G given how strong their D line is. And so it made a lot of sense, you know, two weeks ago, when it first suggested, obviously it makes even more sense today with the Grady Jarrett injury. So we'll see uh, what Contavious Street can do. I'm expecting him, you know, we'll see him get snaps right away. We, we saw that with Van Jefferson, you know, that was a surprise. You know, I think we'll see Contavious Street get snaps probably alongside LaCale London, Taquan Graham, maybe Albert Huggins, maybe Joe Gaziano, all that and stuff. And the Falcons will just sort of collectively and hope that Street and all those guys can collectively fill some of the void left by Grady Jarrett. But that is going to do it for us talking Contavia Street on today's episode. We'll continue today's episode talking with Corey Woodruff, talking about the Falcons quarterback situation and whether or not we know Arthur Smith has been noncommittal in terms of who's going to be the starting quarterback, at least as of today. We'll find out Wednesday, but we'll at least get into the conversation with Corey on should the Falcons make a change from Desmond Ritter to Taylor Heineke, and we'll get into all of that, guys, as we continue today's Locked on Falcons. Good, bad, or in between, it's tough to root for your favorite team on an empty stomach, so order your faves with DoorDash, right? If the Falcons win, you want to celebrate. If the Falcons lose, you want to eat just to get a pick-me-up, right? Why not order on DoorDash where you can get great food? You want to get a great dinner? You want to eat Caribbean? Try Negril. 
You want breakfast, right? You know, get some pancakes, some waffles, something. Try first watch, whatever you want. Find your faves by going to DoorDash. You can get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23, subject to change, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23. Don't forget to use that code LOCK23, L-O-C-K-E-D-2-3, for 50% off up to $10 value on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and spend $15 or more subject to change terms apply. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked on Falcons podcast. And I am joined by an illustrious guest. He is Corey Woodruff, my colleague at the Falcoholic, as well as a contributor over at USA Today for the win. Corey, my friend, how you doing? It's been a while. It's been a minute, man. Um, I feel like I hear from you all the time because I listen to the show a lot, but I'm not like talking to Sometimes I'm talking to you, but you're not hearing back. It's, you know, it's not <laughs> actual recording but it's always good always good stuff uh, i i tend to talk back to my podcast as well so yeah yes, I, I think i think a lot of people have that issue um mm. but uh it's it's when you pause the podcast so that you mm -hmm. can yell at the person like yeah yes, talk about exactly. this, blah, blah, blah. i'm gonna let you finish i'm gonna let you finish but i gotta get exactly. this off my chest and then that's, i just look unhinged i'm just yelling yeah, in traffic yeah that's that's it's when okay. you're you know you're going a little bit too far but <laughs> <clears throat> sorry <laughs> sorry but let's talk about, you know, whether or not the Falcons quarterback situation, which is all the rage. It's always mm -hmm. the, the topic of conversation mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to all NFL teams, but especially the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. As of late, Arthur Smith was noncommittal on who the Falcons starting quarterback would be in their upcoming week nine matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. He promised that he would let the media know on Wednesday uh before they start their practice i'm sure that's angering a lot of folks on twitter who want mm. their news now right and uh, how dare you atlanta falcons head coach take another 24 hours to consider this a very important decision mm. but Corey, i'm curious what are your thoughts on the state of the falcons quarterback situation i know at least reading from your tweets over the last two months you've been preaching patience with desmond ritter i'm curious do you feel like that patience is starting to run out only if the money from Cincinnati stops. They've been sending me some really nice checks over there. Just kidding. It's a joke. Um, no, I just, no. Like, yesterday I was at the game. I didn't want to, like, you know, work it because it was my day off. But I was just, like, I was in the stands with everybody else seeing what was going on. And, like, again, I'm from Nashville. A lot of my friends are Titans fans. I have had to eat, like, buffets of crow over the last few years from all the smack i talked about the titans when they were bad and the falcons were good and then you know just started to shift a little bit so i have like one rule don't embarrass me in front of titans fans so that kind of like made me a little yesterday like this, I don't, this doesn't feel good i need to take a shower but you sleep on it you think and i i, I still think they should start desmond Ritter. like unless they really feel like he's not healthy or, and again, like I know that there's a whole thing with Arthur Smith, but like, I do feel like he's protective of his players. And I do feel like that yesterday watching the way that that Tennessee defensive line was playing, like they let up like what five sacks in the first half. Like it, it just, it wasn't a good idea to keep him in there if there was any concern with concussion. So it was like, that might've just been the reasoning why he didn't go back out there. Like, I don't know if it's necessarily a big conspiracy or something. Like it just feels like, they they sat him because they didn't think he was right. It might just be that simple, but you know, there's a controversy now. It's hard to admit it that, but you know, it's true. Like Heineke played pretty well. Um, he gave them the spark they needed, and I don't know. I, I think that you know, I could spend 20 minutes trying to go over my very complicated thoughts on this, but I think the simple thing to say is just like, what's going to help you more in the long term? And getting an evaluation of Ritter seems like the more viable thing to do long term for the team because you have to make a decision in January and February whether he's going to be your guy next year or not and you can't make that decision either way right now I know that people want to make that decision right now because that makes you feel better it makes you feel better to have answers but we don't get those answers during the season unless things are just disastrous and things have not always been disastrous with Ritter I know that the turnovers are a problem and they'll continue to be a problem as time goes on but 
you can't tell me that like you haven't seen growth, you haven't seen progress because it's been there. It's just coming in ways that are slow and frustrating. And that's sometimes what happens with young quarterbacks. Everybody has their own way of doing things. And we still don't know if Desmond Ritter is the answer. But what do you gain from Heineke short term? Again, it's like it's the Heineke high. Like you get that bump, you get that excitement that maybe they can go out there and win a few games. But unless Arthur Smith thinks that Taylor Heineke is like Ryan Tannehill 2.0, which I'm not sure that he does, because I think if he had, then he would be starting in September. Um, you don't get anything out of it. Like you might get a playoff exit in January after you win the NFC South with like nine or 10 games, but you don't have any answers at quarterback after that. You're still left trying to find somebody long-term because, you know, I've heard a lot of people say over the last 24 hours, like, you know who Heineke is. Like, you are fully aware of who this guy is, and I just don't think that you gain anything long-term from starting a quarterback who is a very established commodity and really doesn't have that Tannehill pedigree that he had when he went to Tennessee of being a former first-round pick. So, I don't know. I don't think there's a good answer. Like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I have the perfect plan for what the Falcons should do at quarterback. But I, I do think that, you know, I wrote last week that Ritter deserves the rest of the year to do this. And I can't back off that after a bad day. So, you know, and he didn't play super well. But you also have to remember that the offensive line played very bad yesterday. And Tennessee's defensive line won the game for them. Um, I know that Will Levis made a few big plays and that mm -hmm. absolutely helped. But like the Tennessee defensive line said from the first snap, we're going to dictate everything that you do. And the offensive line wasn't ready for it. So Ritter didn't have a lot of options. He was under pressure a lot. And that is not the position you want to put him in to win. And it's kind of like you said on last yesterday's show, I believe, like they should have run the ball more. Like they really should have worked to get those running backs out on the edges where the Titans defense was more vulnerable and trying to force the pass particularly with the way that the field position was going was just not going to be a working progress for them. So, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but I do think that sticking with Ritter can be a wiser decision long-term than going with Heineke. Yeah. I, I tend to agree with you, Corey, on, on that front. And, you know, I haven't watched the all 22 yet. And so I will say this with the caveat that, you know, after watching the film, I may change my mind that that has happened occasionally uh, from time to time. Um, but I, I tend to agree with you that I think the, the right move is to stick with Ritter. Um, you know, I wouldn't maybe go as far as say absolutely commit to him through the end of the season, but I feel like you, you try to make it to the bye week. Yeah. And if, you know, now if he lays a stinker against and throws four picks against the Vikings, then I, you know, maybe that goes out the window, but like, I think you try to get him through these next two games. Um, and hopefully you continue to see that that improvement that you're, you're discussing. Um, you know, I know the quarterback situation is again, the topic du jour, yeah. but I think you, you talked about, and I'll probably wind up talking more about this on tomorrow's episode. When I break down the all 22, like I do feel like the Falcons issues go beyond the quarterback. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, it's, it's really kind of about the offensive line and the running game on offense. That is really, to me, the biggest thing disappointing this team, not necessarily Ritter's up and down performances. Obviously, the turnovers are certainly problematic, as you say. Uh, so that may be something that we'll get into a little bit more on tomorrow's episode. But we will leave the quarterback uh, conversation aside for today. And we will talk about the other big news of the day, which is that Grady Jarrett is, in fact, done for the season with a torn ACL. We'll pick Corey's brain on that as we continue today's Locked on Falcons. So you want to score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get a $150 in bonus bets with a winning $5 money line bet. That's right. $150 if your team wins. And now I, I know you're sitting there going like, Aaron, you expect me to go and bet money on the Atlanta Falcons winning games? Well, here, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. FanDuel doesn't know that the Falcons are your favorite team. So you can bet that on the Chiefs or the Bengals or the Eagles. You can bet it on someone who's actually good in terms of the money line bet, right? And it's not just money line. You can bet the spreads, right? If you feel feeling frisky, you're feeling like, hey, Taylor Heineke, Desmond Ritter, doesn't matter. Falcons going to cover that four and a half point spread in week nine against the Minnesota Vikings. 
Go for it. Player props, over-unders, FanDuel lets you bet anything. You want to bet tennis. You want to bet billiards. You want to bet Aussie rules football, rugby, whatever. FanDuel's got you covered. It's the perfect time of year. NHL, MLB, NBA, and NFL all running strong. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Kick off this NFL season. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. So continuing today's Locked On Falcons before we get into this conversation about Grady Jarrett and the loss and the impact of that loss to this team, I do want to let you guys know about the Locked On NFL Kickoff Live each and every Friday, getting you guys geared up for the weekend's action. Of course, our good friends, Tanitra Batiste and uh, Jarvis Davis are joined by Kyle Krabs each and every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern time for Locked On NFL Kickoff Live. If you are subscribed to Locked On Falcons or any other Locked On NFL channel, you will get that automatically. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Get the uh, upcoming Week 9 preview as well as fantasy tips and betting angles, all that and more at 2 p.m. Friday Eastern time on the Locked On NFL Kickoff Live. So as we learned on Monday, Grady Jarrett is done for the season with a torn ACL that he suffered on, I think, the first series of the uh, Titans game. Uh, it was first reported by Adam Schefter of ESPN and later confirmed by Arthur Smith in his Monday press conference. Corey, I'll give you the floor. What are your thoughts on this loss? Well, I think from just a general perspective, it stinks. Like, I mean, this is just not something you want to see, like, you know, Grady and Jake Matthews are like the the day one people who have stuck with this rebuild and have been very steady throughout their whole careers. They're both Hall of Ring of Honor, however you want to say it, players for the Falcons. Like, just stinks. And it's, you know, it's just too early to talk about, like, the long-term ramifications of that. The only thing I will say is that the his contract starts to go into cuttable territory next season. So as much as I don't want to imagine that was Grady Jarrett's last game as a Falcon, I think that after the season, that conversation could start. I don't know if it will. I could very easily see Jarrett coming back next year and I'd be 100% happy with it because that would be a horrible way for his time to end here. But just something to think about, I think, long term. But, you know, I think short term, it definitely – takes the wind out of your sails from a general perspective. But the only thing that gives me hope is that they've built the defensive depth to where if catastrophe struck, it wouldn't be the end of the world. And I don't think that the Falcons defense will just completely fall apart with this, but I do think that you are going to see teams zero in on this absence and plan around the fact that, okay, this is a gap in this Falcons defense that wasn't there. Like it's been a good unit all season, but this is going to be something that's going to get exploited. Rightfully so. If you're an offensive coordinator, you're going to want to try to hit the interior harder without Jared in there. So, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see if they make a move for somebody or if, you know, they decide to call up Timmy Horn from the practice squad, which I think is probably the most realistic situation in that. But it just stinks. Like it was such a weird thing. I didn't even see it happen yesterday. Like I had to like look at my phone to know that he was hurt. And it's just, you know, it's just not what you want. And I think that he's just been such a great Falcon for so long. And you hope it's not the end. I hope he's back next year. I think that the team could absolutely use him. And, you know, Grady's Grady. Even when he's not at his best, he's still one of the best people you're going to have out there. So it's just a uh, it's a bummer, and I just I hope that uh, he's able to recover and everything's okay. But you know, I don't think it's the end of the world, but I do think it's something the defense is going to have to plan for, and it's just not a player you can easily replace. Yeah, I, I think that's more than fair. Uh, I'll just reiterate some things that uh, were touched upon on the Locked On Atlanta Football Party with myself, Jarvis Davis, Tanisha Batista, and Toy McElhaney on Monday, where, like as you say, because of the improvements that the Falcons have made along their defensive line, they can better absorb losing Grady Jarrett mm -hmm. today than they probably could have at any point over the last, probably even going back probably like five years. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's the only real silver lining in, in this scenario. Obviously you're losing a, a, a very good football player. And even though I don't think Grady has been as big of a, of a playmaker and game changer this season as he has been in the past, I still, I, I sort of termed this to the, the Locked on Falcons insiders. Um, I basically said he, he's still a guy that you trust 
to use a basketball analogy that in the final minutes of a basketball game, he can go out there and get you a bucket, even if he isn't necessarily putting up the stats in terms of points and rebounds that you are used to uh, Grady doing. Uh, and if you want to get those sorts of insights, uh, by all means, check out the Locked On Falcons Insider, join subtext.com slash locked on Falcons. Link in the description below. You get uh, basically you, you got my reaction to this news at 10 a.m. rather than waiting till 10 p.m. Or, or 10 a.m. on Tuesday uh, to hear my thoughts on that news, uh, as well as you get access to the extended All-22 review. I know I, I should be plugging stuff as I'm talking <laughs> about Grady here, but uh, uh, that is the way it is. But um, yeah, I, I think this is a, a significant blow to the Falcons, but it's not necessarily a devastating blow to the Falcons because I do think David Onyemata has been playing really well. You still have Calais Campbell. You may kick him inside, um, and that may lead to you know, more playing time for some young players at defensive end, including Zach Harrison, Joe Gaziano. I was thought we were going to get some gas mm-hmm. on, on Sunday with Bud Dupree nursing a growing injury, but we did not get that. So the Falcons do have better depth at that position to better absorb that injury. But obviously, you know, not, nobody on this roster outside of David Onyemata really can sort of, in, no offense to Calais Campbell, but um, he's not the Calais Campbell of, of the past. Um, but no one else on this roster can sort of touch Grady Jarrett's potential to impact the team. So that is a significant blow. But I do think the Falcons um, have the, the potential assets to absorb this blow better. And they may be able to add more potential assets moving forward because the trade deadline is looming. Mm-hmm. Still got oh, nine more games left to play. But Corey, I really appreciate you joining me on today's episode. And where can people... Uh, get your insights if they want to hear your thoughts on not only the Falcons, but the rest mm-hmm. of the NFL over the next nine plus weeks. You can find me on Twitter at Corey Woodruff 47. Um, uh, you can find me over at USA Today's For the Win, writing about all types of things. Really great website there. Uh, you can find some Falcons takes from me every now and again at the Falcoholic. So guys, that's going to do it for us on today's episode. Want to thank Corey Woodruff again. We did talk about Montez sweat trade and all that stuff. Don't know if you know that segment will see the light of day. Who we'll see, but you know, tomorrow's episode will be an all 22 review where I'll be looking at the film, looking at both quarterbacks' performances, Desmond Ritter in the first half, Taylor Heineke's in the second half. We'll see if you know, you know, the words behind me on my whiteboard run the ball that you know may may be like, hey, we got to get you know, said it like three weeks ago, get back the basics, all that stuff. But, you know, have thoughts on all that. We'll see uh, what we talk about as well as potential trades. If, you know, more moves are on the horizon. So that's all in store for you guys on tomorrow's episode. Continue to make Lockdown Falcons your first listen. Appreciate it. Till then.